Hi, this is Alan Cho. Now I'm going to cover the basic workflow of Stardust. As I mentioned in previous tutorials, each emitter uses a clock to determine how frequently new particles are created. A clock is assigned to an emitter through the emitter's constructor's first parameter. I also mentioned that emitters use initializers to initialize new particles and uses actions to update particle properties repeatedly. And an emitter can have multiple initializers and actions. This simple diagram shows that this emitter object has three initializers for position, scale, and rotation, and three action objects for moving, rotating, and aging. An emitter, I mean, uh, an initializer is added to an emitter using the emitter's add initializer method, and an action is added to the emitter through the emitter's add action method. After all these classes are set, you are ready to manipulate the numeric data. And the render is for visualizing the numeric data in your memory. So you have to add the emitter to the renderer. You add an emitter to the renderer through the renderer's add emitter method. And here is a sim here is a simple code for the repeated uh, calling for the emitter's step method. It's the main loop. This simple code makes use of the enter frame event. Okay, now let's look at the deeper look into the main loop. So here's the first iteration. The, em uh, the emitter asks the clock object for how many particles it should create. The clock object checks its getTicks method and returns 2. This means the emitter should create 2 new particles in this iteration. So the emitter would create 2 particles. These 2 particles are added to the emitter's internal particle list. And the uh, initializers would initialize the particle's properties. Then the emitter would inform that uh, inform the renderer that it has created two new particles, and the renderer would handle them. For the display object renderer, it would add the corresponding display objects to the newly created particles to the display list. And the action objects would update the particle's properties, and the renderer would handle the update. Now let's enter the second iteration. The same thing goes on. The emitter asks the clock for how many particles it should create, and in this case, it returns three. So the emitter creates three new particles, and these three particles are initialized by the initializers. And this initialization is handled by the renderer. Later, the action objects update all the five particles in the particle list and the renderer would handle the update. Later on, the emitter has spotted a dead particle and it decides that it should be removed from the particle list and the renderer would also handle this removing process. In the case of a display object renderer, it, it removes the particle's corresponding display object from the display list. Alright, so this is the end of the second iteration. Now you have the basic idea of the main flow, I mean the main loop.